there is a growing and an alarming trend of the overuse of antipsychotic medications for too many things in which they are too dangerous to be used for. One good example is the overuse of Seroquel for insomnia. In fact, the fact that Seroquel is used at all for insomnia is a big problem. A recent article in the Canadian National Post quoted an emergency room physician as saying, can the next doctor wanting to prescribe Seroquel for sleep just not? Seroquel is a major tranquilizer, also known as an antipsychotic, and is used for things like bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, but all, like all antipsychotics, it also has a lot of side effects, including the ability to cause tart tardive dyskinesia. It also can cause massive amounts of weight gain and diabetes, and is generally a very dangerous drug. But the reason why it's being prescribed a lot for insomnia is because it is not a controlled substance. A lot of drugs that are approved for insomnia, like benzodiazepines, are controlled substances. And for some reason, a lot of people seem to think that as long as something is not addictive, it's safe. Well, this is not always the case. And in fact, a lot of times a drug that is less addictive is actually more dangerous than a drug that is more addictive. A perfect example of this is Seroquel. Seroquel is much more dangerous than the benzodiazepines that are approved for insomnia, even though benzodiazepines are Schedule IV controlled substances and are therefore considered to have a mild potential for abuse, more so than Seroquel. However, they are still a lot less dangerous. Seroquel and other antipsychotics do have a lot of side effects, including things like a severe amount of weight gain, type 2 diabetes, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, tardive dyskinesia, and more. None of these drugs have ever been approved by the FDA or by any other country in the world for the purpose of insomnia. The reason for that is whenever the FDA approves a medication, they always take into account whether the benefits outweigh the risks. Now, insomnia is a very large market, and the search for a supposedly non-addictive drug that works for insomnia is always a big thing and something that some pharmaceutical companies would jump on. But the reason why pharmaceutical companies have never sought to try to get something like Seroquel or any other antipsychotic approved by the FDA for the purpose of insomnia is the benefits simply don't outweigh the risks. Now, a lot of people are skeptical of benzodiazepines, and I'm not saying that in all cases, benzodiazepines are the best choice. But I will say this, in all cases, benzodiazepines are a better choice for someone with insomnia than Seroquel. Using any antipsychotic drug like Seroquel for the purpose of insomnia is equivalent to hitting somebody over the head with a mallet who has insomnia, and once they become unconscious saying, see, they went to sleep. It's just not worth the risk. These drugs are just too dangerous. Say what you will about benzodiazepines. The fact of the matter is there are several benzodiazepines, including fairly potent ones like Hal Halcyon, that are approved for the use of insomnia. This means that the FDA has determined that the benefits outweigh the risks for some benzodiazepines in the case of insomnia. But this is never gonna be the case with an antipsychotic. All antipsychotics like Seroquel are classified as major tranquilizers. All benzodiazepines are classified as minor tranquilizers. The fact is, benzodiazepines are a lot safer for the purpose of insomnia, even if they are slightly more addictive. Not only that, but there are reports now of people using Seroquel on the street as an addictive drug or a drug of abuse, although I'm not exactly sure why too many people use it that way, but I suppose for some people it does have addictive properties. I do want to point out that when it comes to the reality of how a lot of times when you're taking a sleeping pill, you will need more and more of the sleeping pill at a higher and higher dose to fall asleep. And if you stop taking the pill, it can be very hard to sleep without it. The same is true. This can happen with benzodiazepines, but it also definitely happens with antipsychotics like Seroquel. If you're dependent upon Seroquel to sleep and all of a sudden you stop taking it, you could have rebound insomnia that's worse than the original insomnia that you had. There have actually been only two studies done on whether Seroquel is effective for insomnia. 
One of them came to the conclusion that while it does cause people to fall asleep compared to the placebo, it's too dangerous to be used for insomnia. The other study didn't even find any statistically significant improvement in the people taking Seroquel in falling asleep, sleep quality, sleep time, and sleep latency. All antipsychotics have the side effect of being sedating, and Seroquel is one of them. However, Seroquel is more sedating than the average antipsychotic. As you can see from this chart, quetiapine, which is the generic name for Seroquel, is more of a histamine antagonist than the other antipsychotics on this chart. In theory, its higher affinity for the histamine receptors is the reason why it is more sedating than the average antipsychotic, similar to the reason why something like Benadryl works as a sedating drug as well. But that also means that over-the-counter Benadryl is a safer alternative to Seroquel and probably has a similar benefit when it comes to helping people fall asleep. All in all, 70% of the prescriptions for antipsychotics in the United States are prescribed for reasons that don't involve psychosis at all. And this overprescribing of antipsychotics is a real problem being pushed by the drug companies because these drugs have all turned into blockbuster medications for the drug companies since they're prescribed for so many different reasons, especially since they're always promoted as being something that is not addictive and is not a controlled substance. And people don't seem to care that they have a lot of problems that make them more dangerous than many drugs that are controlled substances. And that's a big problem. As I discuss in depth in my video, the top three most dangerous psychiatric drugs, antipsychotics, even for people who have schizophrenia, usually are not useful over the long term. In fact, for most schizophrenics, after two or three years, they begin to actually make you worse. However, this is not always the case. But it pretty much is always the case that antipsychotics should never be used for something like insomnia. This is especially true when you consider how many other medications are approved for insomnia that are probably just as effective, if not more effective, and are safer than uh, any antipsychotic like Seroquel. This includes medications that are benzodiazepines, but it also includes non-benzodiazepine medications like Ambien or Trazodone. All in all, antipsychotics like Seroquel are extremely dangerous medications and probably should not be prescribed as liberally as they are, especially for things like insomnia, where they're simply too dangerous to be used. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon for notifications, and together we shall take over the world. I upload eight videos a month. If you'd like to see me make more videos about mental health, please let me know in the comments.